Good day to each and every one. Good day. Let's begin. Time to know what I'm going He 
هیچ لور نتوانی و هیچ گور نتوانی ما شد So the question one should ask oneself What is the name of the created Buddha seen at Lord and God their titles and not names? In the Greek mythology, there are many gods. There are such gods as Hercules, the god of strength, Venus, the god of love, and Neptune, the sea god. Hercules, Venus, and Neptune are their names, or the title, Adelante. In England, we have a place called the House of Lords. And at the House of Lords, we have such lords as Lord Rushmore, Lord Snowden, Lord Chesterfield, Chester Nimitz, Lord Moore, Snowden, and Chesterfield are their names. Lord, the title is stolen by the monarch or the ruler of England. Now, Jesus is a name. It's an erroneous or surround name. The mind investigation on your part into a good or rich dictionary on social psychopedia, you will come up with these facts for yourself. That up to this day, in the Hebrew language, or characters or symbols or alphabets, there's no symbols or characters in Hebrew. When transliterated letter to letter, some of the sound symbol to symbol comes close to or resemble that of the English LJ. There is no J in the Hebrew language up to this day. Neither is there a letter J in the Greek alphabet, the Latin alphabet, just the name of it. Further my investigation on your part into the letter J will reveal. That the letter J was originally the letter I and came into existence for the first time within the 17th century, 17, 18, 19, 20, which gives the letter J some 400 years in its total existence on the face of the earth. Bear in mind that the true saving word to this Yahshua was this to a 2,000 years ago. And the letter J is only 400 years in its total origin. So if we take the 200, when you take the 400 from the 2000. You get 1,600 years. So when you take the 400 from the fact that the same in the world was understood 2,000 years ago, you come up with 1,600 years after his birth, after his ministry, after his death, burial, resurrection, and the recording of the Holy Spirit in the final. It took 1600 years after that, after Pentecost, after the disciples went and preached and teaching his name, it took 1600 years after that before your Bible translators could insert into the Bible any name with a letter J. So, such things as Jesus, Jehovah, John, and Joshua. Are impossible renderings of those names. Because if you examine the first man that the creator Yahweh gave his name to, was a man you know to be called Moses at the backside of Mount Sinai. And that took place 4,000 years ago. And the letter is only 400 years. So when you take the 400 and the 4,000, you get 3,600 years. So it took 3,600 years after Yahweh revealed his name to Moses and gave them commandments, the children of Israel, and gave them commandments to honor his holy name. It took 3,600 years after that for your Bible translators 
to remove the name of Yahweh out of the Bible. Secret image of the world. So when you examine the name Jesus, J E is originally I E. When pronounced, it is pronounced E O L E, which is the name of a Babylonian god. In fact, S U S comes from Z E U S U S, the supreme god of the Greeks. And Christ, which is a title, comes from Krishna, the Hindu son of the god. So right within the name of Jesus and the title Christ, we have a Babylonian god, a Greek god, and a Hindu god. Three pagan gods of three pagan of different nationalities. The true correct original and only name of your mind ever look at it, Father is Yahweh. The name Yahweh comes from the original Hebrew text of Ramadan, text of meaning 4, 1, 2, 3, 4. And Ramadan represented these four characters or symbols in Hebrew, which are your own Hebrew or Hebrew. The Hebrew language is a continental language, in that they do not use the aid of vowels to make their words pronounceable. So as represented by these four characters, it is pronounced Yahweh by the Hebrew speaking people. The Hebrew language is read from right to left, online that of the English language that is read from left to right. When the Hebrew text of Ramadan is transliterated like a collector, song for song, symbol for symbol, this is a Y, this is an H, this is a W, and this is an H. In order to make the Hebrew text of Ramadan, pronounced by Yahweh in English, as it is pronounced Yahweh by the Hebrew speaking people. We as English speaking people, we need the aid of our vowels to mean our words pronounced. And these vowels are A, T, I, O, U, and sometimes Y, taking the place of I. Through this divine vision and revelation, it will be meaning. But in order to know which power to use, and where to place it. That one must go to the first man, Adam, that was drawn out of the ocean by the earth, using the only power in his name, which is the A, placing it between the Y and the H to make pronounceable Yah, the masculine portion of our heavenly body's name, which is the E, placing it between the W and the H to be pronounced for way, the feminine portion of our Heavenly Father's name. Your my Heavenly Father, whose true, correct, original, and only name is Yahweh, is both male and female in principle, right within himself. And we being his offsprings, we do testify that that is true, because right within our physical bodies, whether we be man or woman, we possess both male and female glands called hormones. The male gland or hormone that is in everybody's body is called androgen, symbolized by A. Showing proof that the A is correctly placed between the Y and the H to make pronounce the Yah, the masculine portion of the heavenly father's name. The female gland or hormone that is in everybody's body. It's called estrogen, symbolized by E. Same proof that the E is correctly placed between the W and the H to make pronounceable way the feminine portion of our heavenly father's name. So whether we be man or woman, we possess both androgen and estrogen right within us. In a man, there's a greater percentage of androgen and a smaller percentage of estrogen. In a female, there's a greater percentage of estrogen and a smaller percentage of androgen. Testifying to Yahweh, who is both male and female within himself, and he has made mankind with the both male and female hormones right within us to testify of him. And 
and look at your name in his image and his likeness. Elohim, which is the word of Son, is Yahweh's divine pluralistic title. Elohim is the divine title that Yahweh chose for himself, unlike that of God and God. And in the Hebrew theology, it means Yah. So there's a relationship between Yahweh and Elohim, Yah and Yah. When you turn the Bible to so called John 5 43, the Savior of the world, when he came into his ministry, it stated, I am come in my Father's name. And if you see me not, say if another, or let another come in his own name, then we will receive. From a natural standpoint, a natural child that is born into this creation takes on the natural surname of the natural father or parent. If that parent surname is Smith, Jones, or Lewis, that child automatically is called Smith, Jones, or Lewis. Likewise, the same in the world. He said, I have come in my father's name. So he has come taking on the masculine portion of his heavenly father's name, which is Yah. So there's Yah and Yah. And the next part of his name, which is pronounced sure in Hebrew theology, it means salvation. So his name is Yah Shua. Yah, the short form of Yahweh. And sure meaning salvation. No, we encourage you when you listen to these lectures to have an open mind. And as such, we are duty bound to express this knowledge to you also with an open mind. Knowing fully that you was taught that it is Jesus who said, I am coming my Father's name. So let us be open-minded and let us examine to see if it is possible that Jesus is the one who truly said, I am coming my Father's name, knowing that there is no change Hebrew up to today and that he's a Hebrew person. He walked in the flesh as a Hebrew speaking person. However, Let's take examine it. If it is possible that Jesus is the one who say I am coming my father's name. So when we examine it, and it taught us the heavenly father's name to be Lord, to be God, to be Jehovah, some say Allah, some say Buddha, on whatever might be fashionable in one society or one culture, as opposed to another. So let us see. Now, when we look at the Lord, not only is Lord a title and not a name, but when we go into the etymology, the root meaning of where the term Lord has come from, we will see it has come from Adonai, it has come from Mula, it has come from Baal, and Baal has come from Beltibab. And Belzebub is the prince of demons, which you know is using for the silver of the devil. So, anybody telling you the Lord bless you, you will know the true meaning of what that is spiritually. See? So, that is where Lord has come from. And there is no resemblance with Lord and Jesus. Because there's a resemblance in your name, your surname, and your parent's surname. And there's no resemblance with Lord and Jesus. Now, if you notice, I'm not telling you about Christ, because Christ is not a name. It's a title that comes from Krishna, the Hindu son of the Lord, which is the worship of the physical son you see every day. Rise and set in the material heavens or the skies. Then we go to God. You see the Heavenly Father is to be called God. That's his name. And remember that the God is the title also. See? 
So when you go into the etymology or the root meaning of where God has come from, you see it was used by the, the Germans who spell it GTT, which is God coming from the Gothic, which is not the holy. And the Assyrian word from the German that is spelled G-A-W-D. And the English word from the Assyrian that is spelled G-O-D. And if you read it from right to left, you see what you will get. Okay? And there is no resemblance of God and Jesus. It's the same come in the name of God. Then what about Jehovah? There is no J in Hebrew. And if the Savior of the world say he has come in his father's name and he gave us the father's name to be Jesus, what father the third of Jehovah has anything to do with Jesus? Then you might want to know where they get the term Jehovah from. See? What they did is went into the capture of Ramadan which is why it is Jamaic, and they change the white in Dutch, and they use the oil bones of Adonai, and that's how they got Jehovah. So that cannot, that is not the name of the of the world, and then there is no resemblance to Jehovah and Jesus. They say that Jesus coming in Father's name, and as far as they is Jehovah. What about Allah? Likewise the same. Buddha likewise the same. See? And there is no king army. So they have a question to answer. Where they get Allah from? See? So truly it is Yahshua. But you are 2,000 years ago saying, I am coming my father's name. Just like you come in your father's name. See? Or your parents will live. See? And he said, you receive me now. So back there, 2,000 years ago, they did not receive the assurance. You receive me now. He said, let another, or if another, should come in his own name, him you will receive. So the world has rejected the assurance of Messiah coming in his father's name and has adopted all types of names and accepted them, including Jesus, to be the savior of the world. And in Acts 1, 12, it tells us, neither is there salvation in any other. For there is none other name on the heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. So he's telling us there's only one name. The true original name that has salvation in it. Any other name has no salvation. For there is none other name on the heaven given among them whereby we must be saved. Saving in the name of Yahshua and Yahshua Lord. Now let me turn your attention to this chart. This chart here is called the Mosaic chart. And on this chart, Yahweh, which is your spirit, is symbolized by God. But Yahweh in his pure spirit state is not a cloud. When you use this cloud to depict Yahweh, you see that the cloud has no discernible shape and form. This is this orange and fire of the dog, extends to all the edges of this shaft. And then we know this shaft divides between the orange and fire of the dog. So, to a principle, unlike man, does everything the universe. And the sum total of this creation divides between the pure spirits they appear. Yeah. Because Yahweh is the ultimate source, such that Yahweh is the limitless and the bond of all things. It is within Yahweh, which is pure spirit, that we all live and move and have our being. As some of your words have said, so we are also Yahweh's offspring. 
the hour in the plan, cannot perceive of him or understand him in his pure spirit state. So it was right within himself to take on his super, incorporeal shape of God that is, having the shape and form of a man, yet without flesh and blood, that he entitled Yahweh Elohim, which is the word of God. This great heavenly anthropomorphic being, Yahweh Elohim, is he outside, or he is the original pattern of the universe? It is he, Yahweh Elohim. In that same vision to Moses on top of Mount Sinai, showed Moses how he is comprised in part, not in totality, of these nine divine principal attributes of Yahweh in an organized shape of God. Divine wisdom, divine knowledge is from divine intelligence. Divine love, divine justice, divine beauty, divine foundation, divine soul, and divine power. After Yahweh had Moses to lead the children of Israel out of Egypt, this part of the chapter in that color represents Egypt. So after Moses led the children of Israel out of Egypt, And Yahweh took him upon Mount Sinai. Here Yahweh Elohim instantaneously transformed himself into the extreme world. So we didn't put this tabernacle pattern of sanctuary in a vision, which consists of a most holy place, a holy place, and a court around the world. One, two, three compartments, but one tabernacle pattern. We go about in this school to prove that everything in the universe is made and operates and is dictated according to the structure and function of this divine tabernacle pattern. And absolutely nothing escapes the pattern. Yahweh Elohim could only be seen in divine vision and sometimes accompanied by divine revelation as was given to the so called John of the Higher Pattern. In the year 1896, in which we wrote in the so called Book of St. John, chapter 1, beginning the first verse, it states, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with the Yahweh, which is pure spirit, and the Word was Yahweh. Same was in the beginning with Yahweh, all things was made by him, Yahweh Elohim. And without him, Yahweh Elohim was not anything made. That was made. In him was light, and that light was considered a light for the light of man. Finally, Yahweh Elohim manifested himself in the physical shape and form of a man entitled Yahshua the Messiah, who the religious world wrongfully or ignorantly calls Jesus Christ. This is further verified that same so called book of St. John, chapter 1. Beginning the 14th verse, we state, and the word Yahweh Elohim was made flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, for the grace and for the truth. Now, in this school, we have kept primary constitution and aims and objective of the body. One, to help you find a new Yahweh over Elohim as she really is and actually exists. Two to form the nucleus of universal brotherhood of humanity in Yahshua Messiah, without distinction of race or nationality, creed, sex, caste, or color. Three to investigate the unexplained spirit law or so called law of nature and the powers latent in man. Four to encourage and promote the study of the scriptures. Comparative religion, psychology, philosophy, and modern practical and occult science. Fifth, to escapade current superstition, skepticism, and ignorance. Six, to learn, know, and understand the operation of Yahweh's eternal purpose, operating through the dispensation and ages. Seven, to discern and avoid being deceived by Lucifer, the serpent, the devil, the dragon, and Satan, and his demons. Operate in the mystery of iniquity on earth through the dispensation of time. Eight, to earnestly contend for the common salvation and faith, which was once delivered unto the sons 
or children of Yahweh. None could make known of Yahweh from the beginning of the day. There is no other name under heaven given among men whereby we might be saved, save it in the name of Yahshua the Messiah and Yahshua the Messiah. And ten, to inherit eternal life now in the kingdom of Yahshua the Messiah with the hope of eternal glorification in the new state. Our watch with his peace and our slogan is to speak with you. Always in my prayers. 
make a request. If by any means now I went and I have a prosperous journey by the will of Abraham to come unto you. For I long to see you that I may depart unto you some spiritual gift to the end ye may be established. That is, that I may that I may be comforted together with you by the multi by the mutual faith in both of you and me. Nor I will not have you ignorant, brethren, that often times I purpose to come unto you, but was left in a room, that I might have some fruit among you also, even as among other Gentiles. I am a debtor Go to the Greek and to the barbarians, go to the wise and to the unwise. So as much as in me is, I am ready to preach the gospel. To you that are alone also, for I am not ashamed of the gospel of the Messiah, for it is the power of heaven unto salvation to everyone that believes it. To the Jews first and also to the Greek. For there is the righteousness of Elohim revealed from faith to faith. As it is written, the just shall live by faith. For the wrath of Elohim is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness or unholiness and all unrighteousness of men to hold the truth in unrighteousness because that which may be known of Elohim is manifested in them. For Elohim has showed it unto them, for the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made. He is the children of God and his brother, so that they are without excuse. Because that when they knew Elohim, they glorified him not as Elohim, neither were thankful, but became vain in their imagination, and their foolish hearts were down. Professing themselves to be wise, they became fool, and changed the glory of the uncorruptible Elohim. Into an image being like to corrupt the man and the birds and all of the beast and keeping things. We are called Elohim, or should give them up to unthinkingness through the lust of their own hearts, to dishonor their own bodies between themselves, who change the truth of Elohim into a lie and worship and serve the creature more than the creator, who is blessed for everyone. Hallelujah. For this cause, Elohim gave them up unto vile affections. For even their women did change the natural use into that which is against nature, and likewise also the men. Leaving the natural use of the woman, burn in their lusts one towards another, men with men, working that which is unseemly, and receiving in themselves the recompense of their error, which was needed. And even as they did not like to retain Elohim in their knowledge, Elohim gave them over to the reprobate man, to do those things which are not convenient, being filled with all unrighteousness, fornication, wickedness, covetousness, maliciousness, full of envy, murder, deceit, debate, malignity, whisperers, backbiters, haters of Elohim, despiteful, proud, boasters, and 
monsters, inventors of evil things, disobedient to parents without understanding, covenant breakers without natural affection, implacable, unmerciful, who knowing the judgment of other men, that they which commit such things are worthy of death. Not only do the same, but have pleasure in them that do them. Here in the Romans, the first chapter. My hands desire for Israel is that they might be saved. But they go on establishing their own religion. and the second plague that Yahweh had poured out on Pharaoh, his people, and also the children of Israel. See, the first three plagues that was poured out in Egypt also included the children of Israel were plagued too. So I care to bring that up. So the second play with the play of the cross, and then Pharaoh. Who denied knowing Yahweh? Just to recap a little bit, he said he did not know Yahweh, neither would he let the children of Israel go free. But remember, Yahweh told Moses that he would have hardened Pharaoh's heart as he go along and stop him. So here is Pharaoh now, who was boastful. That he didn't care nothing about Yahweh, you don't know him. But remember, we read where Pharaoh did know Yahweh. Because Pharaoh in the flesh was truly the devil that was cast out of heaven, occupying the body the physical body of the man we call him. And he was king of the world. Himself and his angels were cast out of heaven for those who picking up from the last class. So he was in heaven. So he do know who the creator is. Because remember, his, because of his jealousy, and he wanted to rule in heaven, See, he wanted the praise and the glory that if you wanted Yahweh, he wanted it. You see? And he wanted all those angels bowing down to him. 
y want to go. Sí. And then he caused that fire in heaven and he was cast out into the earth and his angels was cast out with him. So as people began to multiply the earth, your satanic spirits just got into them, into the physical bodies. See? And we have them in physical bodies still. They're still doing that. See? As big boy rulers too. As prominent people in the world, they're doing that. The same Satan spirits. Looking for the acknowledgement of the worship that Yahweh that is deserving unto Yahweh alone. So they are in the leaders of the world. No one of the type of laws that have been passed today is evidence of what spirit is in house in these people who call themselves leaders of the world. See? So the thing just keeps going on and what? Overturning and going on. They do know what right and wrong is, but they refuse to be obedient. They do, they do know what good morals are, but they refuse to live by them, or even to encourage them. Some pretend for a time, and then they give you some nasty laws, moral laws. See? by the use of semantics, the science of using words. See? So here this Pharaoh, which is the devil in a body, and he's asking Moses to beg Yahweh to remove the blades. So if you recognize something, Yahweh helps the devil. See when he cries out. So we are in the third plane, and the third plane is the plane of life. Upon him and the man stand. 
Now when you feel sore, when the Pharaoh saw that there was this respite, he had in his heart and had not unto them as Yahweh had said. So again, although Yahweh removed the plague of drugs, Pharaoh had in his heart. Sixteen words, and Yahweh said unto Moses, Say unto Aaron, Stretch out thy rod and smite the dust of the land, that in it may become light for all the land of Egypt. And he did so. For Aaron stretched out his hand with his rod and smote the dust of the earth, and it became light. In man and in beast, and all the dust of the land became life short for the land of Egypt. See, so short Egypt. Everybody, the animals, the people, are infected with, with life. And the magician did so with the enchantments to bring forth life. But they could not. So they were lies upon man and upon him. Then the magician said unto Pharaoh, This is the finger of heaven. You will have God. And Pharaoh's heart was hardened, and he had not gone to them as Yahweh had said. So even the magicians, they have a time to say, Wait. We have no power over this. This is the creator. See, he is the one in charge. He is the one with all the power. So the magicians have to step back. See, because yeah, we have all the power. So fear will start to start again. And Yahweh said unto Moses, Ride up early in the morning and stand before Pharaoh, lo, he coming forth to the waters, and say unto him, Thus said Yahweh, Let my people go, that they might serve me. As if thou wilt not let my people go, he will go. I will send swarms of flies upon thee and upon thy servants. And upon thy people, and into thy houses, and the houses of the Egyptians shall be filled with swarms of flies, and also the ground beyond they are. And I will sever that day. Sever means he will separate in that day the land of the ocean in which my people dwell. That no swarm of flies may be there to the end that thou mayest know that I am, I am Yahweh in the midst of the earth. So, what he's doing now is creating a separation. The first three plagues was experienced both by the Egyptians and Pharaoh and the children of Israel. So that the children of Israel also, so they grew up. On the field. They grew up under his magicians and they grew up serving all the gods and the deities that Pharaoh and his people served. And that is what they knew. They did not know the power of Yahweh. So Yahweh had to play them also for them to understand how powerful Yahweh is, that he wills to be whatsoever he wills to be. See? So then after the third day, he makes a separation. See? I 
and I will make and I will put it in the